Today, I had the feeling that it was possible for me to hit a blunt. What's up family? How's it going? How's it going? Just wanted to tap in with you guys real quick. Just want to talk to y'all. Can I talk to y'all real quick? Can I uh, <clears throat> share a little something with y'all real quick? So, today what I want to talk about is parental trauma. Tough topic for me. It's something I deal with on a personal level. And today, I had the feeling that it was possible for me to hit a blunt. You know what I'm saying? Not that there's any weed around. I'm 18 months sober. But today there was a possibility and a chance that if I was in the wrong environment, it would have been possible for me to hit that blunt. Let me tell you why. Parental trauma is something that goes to the root of why I started smoking weed in the first place. Let me give you some context. So, I have, I would say, a bad relationship with my parents. I have a bad relationship with my mom, but I have a bad relationship with my parents. Now, when I looked at this at a deeper level, I realized that I'm not really connected to my family at all. I mean, my parents are like, let's say, left arm, right arm. And without them, I'm not, I don't have a connection with their parents. So, my grandfather on, e on either side, don't have a relationship. My grandmother on either side, I don't have a relationship. Now, this affects a person at the core, right? So for me, this is something that triggers me wanting to go back to smoking weed. You know, this is why I started talking about quitting weed and becoming sober in the first place because then you start to you start to get to a point where you diagnosing where the root of this problem is. So this is something that makes me get to a vulnerable uh, position because, uh, like for instance, I had a friend growing up. Um, he had both his parents, and it was always a beautiful thing. You know, I would go over to their family, and they would treat me like their son or something. You know, so I know the the feeling of having love in your life when it comes to your parents. <clears throat> now. Um, I don't know if my parents gonna watch this. I don't know if my mom gonna watch this. Um, you know what I'm saying? I love my mom as much as I could love her based on the, the, the relationship that, that we have, you know? And <clears throat> I was talking to a, a coach recently, and you know what I'm saying? He told me that I need to forgive my mother on the fact alone that she is my mother, no matter how bad I feel like she treated me or whatever she did. Because the fact of the matter is, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here, right? So, I don't know how many of y'all have problems with your parents or parental trauma, but I know that it has, it's something, it's probably the only thing that affects me on a deep core because I'm all around, you know what I'm saying, I'm all around a great person, I feel like for myself, you know, I'm all around balanced and everything like that. I, don't, I, don't, I didn't go down the wrong path. I, I, I kept a, a level head in most situations, you know what I'm saying? I'm not reactive over things. So I feel like one of the weakest points for me is something that I have to get over. Um, and it's, it's, it's this parental trauma issue. Now, I'm 28 years old, 28, and I'm still dealing with this. So I'm being transparent with y'all, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't even feel comfortable um, expressing this kind of thing. So I'm looking down because I wrote some stuff. So, you know what I'm saying, part of me. I just want to tap in real quick and, you know what I'm saying, talk to y'all, whoever would listen. It's important to me, and it goes hand in hand with with this marijuana stuff. How long I've been using this? How long I've been using weed as a crutch, and now being sober, I'm able to realize why I used it as a crutch and why it had such an effect over me because it was connected to something powerful, something as powerful as dealing with parental trauma. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't gonna go into detail with all you know. What I'm saying the type of the type of stuff that happened with me and my parents, but. <clears throat> It's something that, that still has an effect on me. Um, so it affects mental health um, because it, 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 you know what I'm saying? I feel like all, all black people in general got, 
hella problems, you know what I'm saying? We, we got hella mental issues, so I feel like majority of us need to go see a therapy regardless. We just got this thing where, oh yeah, you black, you don't need no therapist. But <clears throat> the fact of the matter is majority of us need therapy. We got mental issues deeper deeper than this racial shit. This, I mean, that's the core, but I guess it's coming a lot now because it's the election time right now. Um, by the time this video goes live, y'all probably already gonna have a new president. But um, <clears throat> yeah, so I feel like a lot of people in general use this weed as therapy. And without, if, if let's say if I were to continue to, to smoke weed, I wouldn't even have got to the realization where I'm going on my spiritual growth, where I want to get to a point where I could, you know what I'm saying, be able to talk to my mom and, and have, 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 a, have a loving relationship with my mom, you know? Because ultimately, that's what I crave at the core. I crave to have a relationship with my parents because I don't have any kids yet. When I have kids, I want them to be nourished and loved. You know what I'm saying? So, so I recently uh, came in contact with a uh, life coach. Uh, his name is Khan. So he, he was the one that was telling me about, you know what I'm saying, regardless of the situation, it's just a speck of, we only here for a speck of time. And you know what I'm saying? I gotta make stuff right um, uh, in my life. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's the only thing that's kind of on a spiritual level, you know what I'm saying? Keeping me at a certain vibration. And I'm ready to break through, you know what I'm saying? I'm ready to be the best version I could be. And I'm trying to seek everything that's causing havoc in my life. And that's really the only thing that's just, you know what I'm saying, holding me back from from feeling this negative energy. You know what I'm saying? The coach said, um, all the negative energy, The let me take you some context. I had a, a conversation with my mom probably about three years ago. And we talked, you know, vaguely, deeply about uh, the situation. And um, at that point, I didn't really have all this information that I have now or knowing how to tackle the situation. But um, I'm ready to try again with my mom. And um, you know what I'm saying? It's something that's gonna help because I feel the negative energy of what that is in certain situations. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I get low, that's, that's what I really think about. Um, and that's what would cause me to relapse. So I know that that's some type of root problem. So it's something I need to tackle and I need to tackle it ASAP. So the coach gave me something called <clears throat> the eight steps of anointment. Before I get into the eight steps of atonement is what it is, eight steps of atonement. Before I get into the eight steps of atonement, um, so I'm gonna tell y'all about the conversation. So I had the conversation with my mom and back then we were talking about it vaguely. Um, I'm not sure if she ever uh, said that she was sorry or anything like that, but I remember we, I came to a point where I told her I, I forgave her because at that point I already knew that forgiveness is a big part of this, but I didn't know that there were steps to forgiveness. And this is what I want to share with y'all today, the eight steps of atonement. So when I come to a time when I'm ready to talk to my mom, this is the process that I'm going to have to take. So <clears throat> step one in this process is to point out the wrong and how it made me feel. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? I just don't feel like you did the best you could, you know what I'm saying, whatever, whatever it may be. Um, and I do understand that in this situation, my parent, my mom, she, you know what I'm saying, she did the best that she could with her situation. I ended up where I am today, you know what I'm saying, for a reason because of her. So it's not really just about that in that way, you know what I'm saying. But <clears throat> um, point out the wrong uh, and, and also tell them, you know, how that makes you feel. Now that's step one. I feel like in the past conversation I had with her before I had this information, um, I probably did that and, you know, maybe with some deflection, but step two would be, um, step two is that, so step one is point it out, point out the problem, right? Step two is they must acknowledge the problem. They can't, they can't deflect it or, you know what I'm saying, not take it as seriously as you do. It needs to be, um, they need to acknowledge the situation you know what i'm saying they need to say that they acknowledge they need to they need to um you know you need to have an understanding that they're acknowledging the situation you know what i'm saying and my job isn't gonna be to make them acknowledge it they have to acknowledge it for themselves um the third uh step is they must confess the situation you know what i'm saying and this is the hardest part according to my uh, my coach my, my, if, if I'm getting to a point of forgiveness with my mom, she's going to have to confess the problem and take it as seriously as I do or else we ain't going to be able to move forward. And I feel like 
that's always been the problem because you know what I'm saying like I'm I'm still dealing with this today. I told her I forgave her those years ago, but I still have the negative energy and that's how you know that that you didn't truly forgive somebody is if there's still energy attached to it. So now I'm going to redo this whole situation with her and um you know what I'm saying if whatever happens it's going to be for the best, you know what I'm saying because I got to keep trying. I got to keep trying for me. Because it's going to continue to affect me. And I refuse to pass this type of energy down to my kids because I know how how hurt it has made me, this whole, this whole process. You know what I'm saying? So, step number four, <clears throat> they must repent. That means that they need to feel sorry about what they did. Not only do they have to confess it, which is already hard, they need to, they need to acknowledge how that made me feel. And they need to feel... A sense of sorry about it you know what I'm saying for themselves if they can't do that then I ain't gonna be able to forgive them and you know what I'm saying that's that's part of the eight steps of atonement so um, how you know if they've repented is they've never they don't go back to the same behavior in this situation um, the same behavior is us not communicating so that's the repetitive situation to let me know that there was no repent there was no feeling sorry about it all right, so <clears throat> moving on to step five. Step five is atonement. You know what I'm saying? Step five is at one. Step five is repair, make it right. You know what I'm saying? We, we must make our uh, connection better and uh, make everything right. You know what I'm saying? Like put everything out there on the table and we have an understanding how I feel, how you feel. And you know what I'm saying? This is our chance to, to really uh, start to repair those damages. You know what I'm saying? So... Step six is forgiveness. Now, if we reach a point where she acknowledges the problem and she feels bad about it, <clears throat> and you know what I'm saying, she's apologizing for it, 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 it's the repair, taking ownership of that situation, then I could get to a point where I could go ahead and forgive her and release all that negative energy, which is ultimately what needs to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if I get to release that negative energy, I could look forward and, you know what I'm saying, just feel great about, you know what I'm saying, everything in my life and feel that ultimate balance that's going to push me up to the next frequency. And I feel like that's what I'm lacking right now is, is to, you know what I'm saying, patch up all the, the problems in my life, which I've managed to do. I, I did a lot of um, spiritual growth, you know what I'm saying. I'm at a high place with spirituality. I'm at a high place physically, you know what I'm saying, with my fitness and the balance, you know what I'm saying, the mind balance. This relationship with my parents is something that has a lot of negative weight to it. So forgiveness, we get to a place of forgiveness. If she confesses the issue, she owns up to it. If she uh, repents, you know what I'm saying, and she's sorry for the situation. Otherwise, none of this could happen. I'm, I'm hoping this could happen because I have to continue to try to, to fix this these relationships because... At the end of the day, it's affecting my life, and I don't want to try. I don't want to have to transfer this type of energy to my kid, because I know the type of the type of damage it has on you. Uh, you know, what I'm saying I grew up. I grew up with this 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 feeling, this negativity. I grew up with it, so it will be such a weight lifted off of my life. <clears throat> I've been dealing with this for as long as I can remember, and you know, what I'm saying it's like I can't blame my mom. She did the best that she could with her situation. It's just that you know. I, she, I don't know if she just how she was. She didn't know no better, I guess, you know. And, you know what I'm saying, I, I'm going to love her regardless. You know, we, we don't have a relationship right now. So, you know what I'm saying, a relationship is better than no relationship. And I'm, it's going to be hard for me as well, you know what I'm saying. But if I see that she confessed to it, I'm going to have to just forgive, you know what I'm saying. Like, <clears throat> all, the, all the shit that I feel like I went through, at the end of the day, I only got one mom. So... You know what I'm saying? I'm alive right now. You know what I'm saying? She's alive. You know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> and then um, I'm going to have to, even my sister don't got a relationship with her now. So, it's both of us. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm doing this for both of us. Um, if this works with me, I'm going to encourage us to do it together. We ain't never had no therapist or anything like that. So, <clears throat> I just feel like it has to be done. You know what I'm saying? So, step number seven, reconciliation. That's starting to tighten our bonds, starting to build a relationship, you know what I'm saying? Build a new relationship. We ain't never had a relationship anyway like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, we never was at a point where we was just, you know what I'm saying, togetherness or like, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
And that's how I went into the loophole of smoking in the first place. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I would see all these people, you know what I'm saying? All my friends who have their, their, their parents in their life. And even if they have a bad parent, the parent, and the parents still love them. And, and you could see that love, you know what I'm saying? I just felt like I didn't see that love. Like, and it affected me the whole time, you know what I'm saying? It affected me since I was young until I finally got kicked out at 16 and I had to just do for myself at that point, you know what I'm saying? I just, just struggled the whole time and made it to where I am today without her. So, <clears throat> reconciliation is, is the seventh step. Now the eighth step, what's the eighth step? The eighth step is perfect union, peace of mind. That's a healthy mother-son relationship for me. You know what I'm saying? The relationship I feel like I always lacked. The relationship I feel like I always needed. And, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how much of y'all going through anything like this, parental trauma stuff, but if you are going through something like this, you know how traumatic it is. You know how how, how, how it makes you feel. You know what I'm saying? That lack of love, it, it kind of makes you into a person where you can't really, you know what I'm saying, be there for other people in that deeper way. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of y'all... A lot of y'all are smokers, a lot of y'all are trying to stop smoking, so that tells me that whatever y'all situation is, that just happened to be my, my personal situation, but whatever y'all situation is, y'all got stuff that you guys are dealing with as well, you know what I'm saying? So, the weed is the crutch, you know what I'm saying? The longer you stay sober, you're able to see the problems for what they are, you're able to realize those deeper rooted issues, because I feel like... Like, like I said today, I feel like there's a chance, a possibility that I could have relapsed. If this, if this happens, if this happens right here, um, I'm going to be able to be free of the traps of mental health issues. You know what I'm saying? Because the feeling of dealing with something like parental trauma, at the end of the day, it's mental health issues. I'm gonna have, like, you know what I'm saying? People go to therapy for this. I just, I ain't never been to therapy. I just had a strong will mind. But... That's all I wanted to come here and talk to y'all about today. Those were the eight steps of atonement, basically the eight steps to forgiveness, and I just never had that information. So when I feel like it's time for me to liberate myself, I'm gonna go and really try to talk to my mom. Um, we in different states right now. See, that's this, this. it gets deep for me in my personal life. I left the state that she was in because it was so bad. So it's just a lot, man. And um, whoever's still watching, if you made it this far, Comment below, man. Let me know what y'all situations is. You know what I'm saying? You see I'll be trying to comment back to y'all, trying to help y'all out. This is something that I'm being transparent to, to my viewers with, to anybody that's worth, that's that's watching, anybody that's, you know what I'm saying, anybody that fuck with me, really, because it's it's an issue, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I'm never the person to express myself. I don't really talk about this, so it's a big deal for me personally to be able to just put this out. And that's what I feel like I need to do. That's what the universe is telling me to do is to just go ahead and, and put it out there. You know what I'm saying? Because humans have the, the humans have the capability of healing other humans. So comment below, man, what y'all thoughts are. You know what I'm saying? Comment below if you have any uh, similar experiences. Comment below if you relapsed on your weed journey um, for whatever reason. Because, you know what I'm saying, don't be hard on yourself. Just know that um, you, you want to stop, have the belief that you still want to stop. And um, just keep trying to try that, you know what I'm saying? Keep trying to take steps towards that because it's a liberation, you know what I'm saying? It's the, the power to look within yourselves without the haze, it's liberation. So thank y'all for watching, appreciate it. Um, and I'm gonna change my, I'm, I feel like I need to change my YouTube name, I'm like Ray's Beast. I feel like I'm a beast at life, but it's, it's just more deeper than that, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's a mental deepness, a spiritual deepness, it's, it's too deep. So, I'm trying to come up with a new name if I got any suggestions. Um, subscribe, like, I don't got to tell y'all that. Y'all support a lot, whoever, you know, whoever is my subscriber, whoever really tap in with me. But, you know what I'm saying, that's all I wanted to say. Y'all have a good one, enjoy your night, and don't be fearful about this election. That's all I'm gonna say. Peace. You gon' have to guess. Something fly, something fresh. Meanwhile, like, subscribe, and comment.